Hey everybody. Hey everybody. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Y'all join in really quick. I got a quick word and um it was off of yesterday. Um everyone was asking about Gideon. Everybody was asking about Gideon and um God led me today to um talk about it. Hey everybody. It looks like we got some good connection, so I need to take advantage of it while I have it. So, good morning. I will be in the book of Judges. And um, Judges was before the Ten Commandments and Moses, not Moses, oh, sorry. <laughs> Pay me no attention. I'm everywhere right now. Anyway, we're in the book of Judges, right? And we are in verse uh, chapter 6. Hi from... Nambia, if I said that right. We are in the book of Judges, and we're going to be in two chapters, six and seven. I was debating whether I should read them all, but I don't know how my connection is going to be. So I picked some out just in case my connection goes funky because we know how the devil gets out here. And um, so I wanted to read about it and give you guys a little summation. And God gave me a title for this message as I was writing it. Cause I didn't know what I was gonna call it right and then God said hiding in the dark and I was like okay so the title of this message today is hiding in the dark and um, my phone has an overcast over it so I can't really see comments too well but I'm gonna try to do the best that I could do so I pray you guys have are having a great morning I pray that peace is over your life and right now I just ask that the Spirit of the Living God fall fresh on us today and not, none of me, all of you, no nerves, no fear, just you and me, God, and the people that you want me to speak to, Father God. I ask that everyone that touches this live now and come back later when I post it, let them be healed, let them get a good word, let them get food, fill their body, give them nourishment. And I leave with them my peace and the peace that surpasses all understanding, which is you, God. Spirit of living God, fall fresh on me as I read this word. Fall fresh on them as they watch me read this word, Father God, and let them get an encounter with you, an intimate encounter with you, so they will know who you are, Father God. Amen. Okay. So, we're going to be in Judges. And in Judges, is talking about Israel, right? how they came out and then they thought that you know they're wondering why God has forsaken them pretty much so I'm gonna read a little bit I'm gonna read um I'm gonna read 1 through 10 really quick and I'm gonna tell you about the pain that they're feeling because they don't understand what they did even though I feel like they know what they did because people always know what they did but whatever so we're gonna go here and it says, the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave them into the hands of the Midians for seven years. Seven is completion. Um, and the hand of Midian overpowered Israel. Because of Midian, because, and because of Midian, the people of Israel made themselves the den, and made themselves dens that were in the mountains and the caves of the strongholds. For when for whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites and the Alchemites and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and devour the produce of the land as far as Gaza and leave no substance in Israel, no sheep, no oxen, nor donkey. For they would come up in the, with their livestock and their tents and they would come like locusts in the number. Both they and their camels could not be counted. So they laid, wa laid waste in the land as they came up. And Israel was bought low because of Midian. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. So basically, they did, Israel had forsake God again. They think God forsake them, but they did everything that was evil, making false gods, you know, just acting like God don't exist. And they're wondering, like, why for seven years they're being cast in the hands of the Midianites and the Alchemites because they did what was wrong in the eyes of God. So now they are forced back into the dens. They were forced back to um, caves. They had strongholds over them again. They literally put themselves back in generational curses because of their disobedience. And they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, right? So even when they would plant a harvest, this is why yesterday was so important, me having harvest, right? 
every time they would get a plant of harvest the enemies would come the midianites and the alchemites would come in numbers like that would number like locusts like plagues they would come and they would snatch every single thing that they planted in the ground and they did all of this hard work just so others can eat the fruit of their labor they didn't even get to eat their own harvest because of their disobedience and how they turned their back against god and they're wondering why now how god turned his back against them he knows what he's doing seven but you know just like a child you don't reward bad behavior you make them hold accountability for their behavior and right now they have to take accountability for what they've done they've done everything that was evil in the sight of the lord so no you're not going to get rewarded for bad behavior you're going to get what you get so here we go seven when the people of israel cried out to the lord on the account of the midianites the lord sent a prophet to the people of israel and he said to them thus says the lord the god of israel I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of slavery and delivered you from the hands of the Egyptians and from the hands of who all oppress you and drove out them before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God and you shall not fear other gods for the Amorites in those who lands you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. So they don't need to wonder why God sent a prophet to come and tell them exactly why he did what he did to them why he did not come on their behalf why did he not answer their prayers they can cry out lord lord all they want to but he's going to turn their back on them because they turned their back on him he even gave them examples did i not deliver you from the hands of slavery and not only just from slavery but from everyone who came up against you and tried to oppress you did i not do all of this for you and I told you, I am your God. I am the Lord. I am all of that. You're not supposed to fear any other God but me. Yet here y'all are being fearful. Here y'all are making other gods. Here y'all are doing all of this stuff and y'all calling out my name. What you calling me for when I was right here with y'all and y'all turned y'all back on me? So what are you calling me for now? What do, what do you need from me? You must don't need nothing because when y'all were free and delivered, y'all turned y'all back on me. That's why it's very important when you get to the top, you don't forget how you got there and who you got there with and whose you are. You have to remember whose you are 24-7. Even with the fame and the accolades and the glory, how did you get all of that? One person delivered you from poverty, from depression, from addiction, from domestic violence. One person. One. But as soon as you get what you want to get, you turn your back. And you act like God don't exist. The same God that delivered you from the hands of the oppressors. The same God that delivered you from poverty. The same God that delivered you from addiction. The same God that delivered you. You turn your back. You turn your back. And God says, what do you need from me now? What are you crying for me for? You wasn't just crying when you was over here worshiping that other God. Have him come deliver you. Nevertheless, I will show you who I am again. Here we go in 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the tabernacle of Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abernite, the, Ab the Abernite, um, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Hmm. And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where is all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now he has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in the might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Did I not send you? And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest, the weakest in Manasseh, and I the least of my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. And he said to him, If now I have found favor in your eyes, then show me a sign that, is, that it is you who speak with me. Please do not depart from here until I come to you and bring my present, bring out my present and set it before you. And he said, I will stay here till you return. Midian was the least of his father's house. Kind of reminds me of David. Midian was the, uh, Gideon was the least of his father's house. He was the smallest in his clan. He wasn't a warrior. He was currently 
pressing wine, pressing wheat in the wine press, hiding below ground so his food and his harvest wouldn't be taken and devoured by the enemies because they came to devour everything. What does the devil come to? Steal, kill, and destroy. They were coming to destroy everything that they have. And Gideon was back there shaking his little wheat, praying to God, you know, that they don't come and take all what he has harvested away from him. He was down there hiding, just trying to get a little meal to prepare for his family because he knew that if they was to see him, they would take everything that he had worked away. And he's down there talking to the angel and the angel was like mighty man of valor. And he was like, who? Who, don't you see me down here being beneath who I really am? Don't you see me being scared of everything that was sent to oppress me? Don't you know if I peek my head out the door that they will come and take everything that I've worked for, all of my harvest? Don't you know they will come take all of this stuff? And you talk about mighty man of valor. Where? I am a coward right now. I am working beneath right now. I don't even know who I am right now. I am the least of everything. And he didn't even answer him. He didn't even answer him. He continued to address him as the man that he already knew that he was going to be. He didn't give him any answer for the foolishness that he was saying because he knew that he that he was who he was supposed to be. He didn't care nothing about what he was saying that he was. He knew who God had predestined him to be. He knew that he was before he was formed in his mother's womb. He knew that I can find you in your low place, in your hiding place, and tell you this is who you are. I don't care what you telling me that you are. I know who God says you are. Therefore, I will address you as the mighty man of valor that you are. I don't care that you're hiding, scared, running from your problems, running from your fear, running from all of that was coming to get you. I don't care about that. I'm going to address you because my, I am an angel of the Lord. First of all, I know who God says you are. And I need you to come in agreement with who I say you are and who God says you are. Because I'm not going to even, I'm not even going to sit up here. Um, I'm not even going to sit up here and address you as the man that you think you are because you think you're lesser. I'm going to address you as the warrior that God says you are, that I know you are. So I'm not going to entertain that foolishness of all of that stuff. I'm going to have you come out of hiding, mighty, mighty man of valor. And I'm going to let you know who God says you are. Listen, God ain't playing. So, so here we go. So Gideon went to his house and prepared a young goat, a young goat and unleavened cakes, unleavened cakes of flour. Then he put the meat and then he put the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot and brought it to him under the tabernacle and presented it to him. The angel of God said to him, take the meat and unleavened cakes and put them in on this rock. And he poured the broth over them and he did so. Then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of the staff and was in the hand and touched the meat with unleavened cakes and fire sprung from the rock. And consumed the meat and unleavened cakes and the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Then Gideon perceived that this was the angel of the Lord and Gideon said, Alas, O Lord, for the God, for O Lord of the God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear, for you shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there and called it, The Lord is peace. To this day it still stands. So I'm going to come over to chapter 7. Then Jerubbabel that is Gideon, which is a name change. I got to go back and research that a little bit more because it, it got me. And and all and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of Harod. And there came the camp of Midian was north of them by the hill of Morath in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, the people, the people, um, I actually should have read, you know what? I'm going to come back and give you guys a little insight. I'm going to do a lot of reading if that's okay with y'all. Because I'm going to the battle. But I think you need to know why, why they want to fight Gideon so bad. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to go back to chapter 6. And I'm going to go back to 25. Because it don't sit right with me just letting taking y'all straight to the battle. When he did amazing things before the battle. So y'all take this journey with me, okay? So, um, in, tw in verse, um, in chapter six, verse 25, I'm going to go back cause I can't skip. I just can't. The Lord not going to let me skip. He want me to come back here. So let's get it. That night, the Lord said, that night, the Lord said to him, take your father's bull and the second bull, seven years old and put down the altar of Baal, um, the bell that your father has and cut down the Asherah 
I guess that's how you say it, that was beside it. And build an altar to the Lord your God on the top of the stronghold here with the stones laid in due order. Then take the second bull and offer it as a burnt offering with wood of the ash, asher that you have cut down. So Gideon took ten men and the servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the men of the town to do it by day, he did it by night. When the men of the town rose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was broken down, and the asher beside it was cut down, and the second bull was offered on the altar that had been built. And they said to one another, Who has done such a thing? And after they had searched, searched and inquired, they said, Gideon the son of Joash has done this thing. Then the men of the town said to Joash, Bring out your son that he may die, for he has broken down the altar of Baal and cut down the Asher beside it. But Joash said to all who stood against him, Will you contend for Baal, or will you save him? Whoever contends for him shall be put to death by morning. If he is a god, let him contend for himself, my god. Mm. Let me say that one more time. If he is a god, let him contend for himself because his altar has been broken down therefore on that day that Gideon was called uh, that there, there go that name change that's why God had me say that's why you had me come back okay let me go back okay let me go back because God just answered what I just said if he is a God let him contend for himself because his altar was broken down therefore on that day Gideon was called Jerubbabel saying let Baal contend for himself because he has broke his broken his altar. Now the Midianites and the Alchemites and the people of the east came together and they crossed the Jordan and encamped in the valley of Jerel. But the spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon and sounded the trumpet and the, Al the Abarez was called out to the following, following him and sent messengers throughout Manasseh and they were called out following him and they sent message to Asher and Nepali and they said they came up to meet him I'm sorry y'all these names are just so freaking hard God then Gideon said to God if you will save Israel by my hand as you have said behold I am laying a fleece of wool on the threshing of the floor if the dew is on the fleece alone and it is dry on the ground, then I should know that you will save Israel by my hand. And you have said, and if it is so, when he rose the next day early in the morning, he squeezed the fleece and wrung enough dew from the fle feast to fill a bowl with water. Then Gideon said to God, let not anger burn you against me. Let me speak once more. Please let me test you once more with the fleece. Please let it be dry. Please let it be dry on the fleece only. And all around let do let the dew be. And God did so that night. And it was dry on the fleece and all around was dew. So Gideon basically told God, you know, I'm about to break it down for you so for you can understand. So God had promised that Gideon would beat the Midianites and the Alchemites, right? So he said, God, I want to make sure that it's you. This is why you ask for signs, because God is a God of miracle signs and wonders. So Gideon said, God, if you're really calling me to win this battle, I'm asking for a sign. So he laid a fleece blanket or a fleece rug on the ground. And he said, listen, God, if this is you and you're telling me that you're calling me to win this battle, let the fleece be filled with dew or water in the morning when I wake up. So he woke up and he wrung it out and he saw that it was dew there, right? He was like, okay, so you did what I asked, but it could be anything. Water could have wasted on the ground or whatever. He was like, so I want to just be 100% certain. Please don't be mad with me, God. I'm not saying that you're not calling me to do this. I'm just saying I want to be 100% certain before I go out here and wage war against these people and not only risk my life, but take other people's lives with me, right? So he said, let, let do be around the fleece but don't let the fleece be wet let everything around it be wet but not it so he woke up in the morning everything around the fleece was wet was wet but the fleece itself was bone dry so he was like a hundred percent got the sign 
understand I'm the man for the job. I'm the one I'm the woman for the job. You called me to it, so let's go to war. Now he knows that I am that mighty man of valor that you have called me and that we are finna go win this battle. But now we got the how. Okay, I don't have an army. I'm the least of my clan. You're calling me to be a warrior. You told me to go destroy this this God that they created. And let's go back to that God. They had made a false God named Baal. And they had a temple on the side called Asher, right? So God told him, get up in the middle. Well, he told him not in the middle of the night. He was scared, so he did it in the middle of the night. To get up and go down there and destroy the temple. And when they came and they woke up and they seen that their temple was destroyed, they wanted to go kill him. But his dad went to the door and was like, why y'all coming to kill my son over a God that he destroyed? How can my son destroy a God? If it is a God, then why isn't a God coming up to fight his own battles? Why are y'all coming to fight y'all God's battles if y'all God is y'all God? He wasn't going to be able to destroy that God's temple if that was y'all God. Wrong or right? So if any one of y'all put y'all hands on my son, y'all going to face death. Period. Point blank. And that's when his name turned from Gideon to Jerubbabel. Because he like, y'all coming to contend for y'all God, but y'all God not going to contend for himself. Who's the real God around here? Why your God didn't destroy him when he touched his temple? But y'all coming up to fight for y'all God? No, my God don't need defending. He'll strike you down at where you stand. So I don't need to defend my God, but y'all coming to fight on y'all God's behalf, but y'all God not even showing up on his own behalf. Make that make sense. Nah, what y'all not finna do is come over here and try to kill my son because y'all God weak. Wrong or right? Oh, okay. So, boom. Sorry, I had to break it down. I had to break it down in the hood version real quick. <laughs> So, this is where we come with the how. The how is, he's like, how am I going to come up against these people, God, when I don't even have an army? I'm the least of my clan. You told me to go to destroy Baal. I did. You told me to, to, to do all this do stuff. Okay, I got the sign. Okay, so what's next, God? How am I going to defeat this mighty army that is, is the size of a plague of locusts? And, they, and they, they're crazy. You understand? You, you know, how you want me to go up against this army when it's me? I don't even have an army. I don't even have an army. So, make it make sense, God. So, we finna get to the how-to real quick. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. Real quick. So, then Jerubbabel, which is Gideon, because remember the name changed after he defeated their God. And all the people who were with him rose early that day and encamped beside the um, spring of Harad. And the camp of Midian was north of them, by the hill of Morath in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, the people with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into the into your hand least they boast over saying my own hand saved me now therefore proclaim in the ears of the people saying whoever is fearful and trembling let him return home and hurry away from Mount um, Gilead then 22,000 people returned and 10,000 remained the Lord of Gideon, the Lord said to Gideon, the people are too many, are still too many. Take them down to the water and I will test them for you. And anyone whom I'm saying to you, this one shall go with you and shall go with you. And anyone whom I said to you, they shall not, sorry, the dogs cross the street barking. They shall not go with you, shall not go. So the Lord... So he brought them down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps the water with their tongue as a dog laps, you shall set you shall set himself. Likewise, everyone who kneels down to drink, the number of those who lap putting the hands of the put putting their hands to their mouth was three hundred men. But all the rest of the people knelt down to drink the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 people who lapped, who lapped, I will save with you the Midianites into your hands and let the others of every other man take to his home. So the people took provisions in their hands and their trumpets. And he sent, and he sent all the rest of the Israels, every man to his tent and retained the 300. And the camp of Midian was below in the valley. Okay, so he had a, a, a whole bunch of people. I won't even say. So he had a bunch of people, thousands of people. And then God said, you have too many men with you, right? So he formed an army and he had a massive army. 
But God says, if I give you all of these people to go defeat the Midianites, you will say to yourself that I've defeated them on my own. So God says, I want the glory, not you. Yes, you're going to go fight the battle, but God says, I'm going to get the glory because you're going to think it's you and the army going to think it's them that you guys defeated them in your own number. I am an impossible God. Listen, because I do things that are impossible and you can't possibly go beat hundreds of thousands of soldiers with 300 men, right? Hmm. So God says, all the ones that are fearful and trembling, they can go home now. So he said to them, 22,000 people halt, but they packed their stuff up because they wasn't ready for the battle anyway. They would have went out there and peeing in their clothes on the battlefield. They wasn't ready. They wasn't ready. So 10,000 remain. So God said, take them to the water. And he says, whoever drinks water a certain way is going to be with you. And whoever doesn't is not going to be with you. So all the ones that lapped up the water like a dog do when you drink it, like he drank it from the ground or whatever, is the ones that you're going to keep. And you're like, that sounds messy. God says, that's what I want. I can get a message out of the messy. Listen, so 300 men, 300 men still remain, right? Mm. So... It looks impossible, but we know that I am possible. 300 versus hundreds of thousands of men. Here we go. So, verse 9. That same night, the Lord said to him, Arise and go down against the camp, for I have given it into your hands. But if you are afraid to go down, go to the camp with Pur Pariah, your servant, and you shall hear what they say. Afterwards, your hand shall be your strength as you go down against the camp. Then he went down with Pariah, his servant. Oop, the wind finna blow me. Um, he went down with the servant on the outpost of the armed men where, the camp, where they were camped. And the Midianites and the Alchemites and all the people of the east lay along the valley like locusts in abundance. And their, camp, and their camel, camels were um, without number. So it was a whole bunch of them. And the sand was on the, on the seashore in abundance. When Gideon came, behold, a man was telling a dream to his comadre. And he said, Behold, I dream a dream. And behold, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent. And, is, and it so fell and turned upside down. So the tent lay flat. And the comadre answered, this is no other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, and the man of Israel. God has given him into the hand, God has given it into the hand of Midian and all the camp. So, boom. Gideon scrolled up with his partner, his servant, and they went and spied. Pretty much, they were spies on the camp. So, when he got out there, he could have got, you know, scared because the number of them, like, covered the sea line. It was so many of them, it took up the beach line, right? So they lay low and they overheard, or we call it eavesdrop in on a conversation that a couple of the soldiers were having with each other, right? So one soldier was telling another soldier a dream that he had. And in the dream, he saw them being defeated. And in the dream, not only did they get defeated, they got defeated by a man named Gideon. So now Gideon jump up. He was like, boom, confirmation. Cause the Lord do confirmation when it's for you. He do signs and confirmation. So. He overheard them saying that the battle is already won by a man named Gideon. Come on. The battle was already won. So not only was his confidence like, ooh, bam, God, okay, you sent me down here. I could have got killed by being a spy. You didn't let me get overtaken, but instead you let me hear a conversation that they're talking about. And I'm a nobody, but I'm a somebody to my enemies. Because first of all, why would the enemies be coming after somebody that's a nobody? To, uh, the least of the clan. Somebody ain't got a name. Why is the enemy after you so bad? Why is the enemy running after little old you? Because first of all, it ain't little old you. Everybody talking about you. Everybody dreaming about you. Everybody know about this man, this woman that God has called. You might not know it until God bring it out to you but when god bring it to you baby the enemies gonna know your name that's why they attack you so hard that that's why you are who you are that's why the attacks been so big on your life your whole life that's why because it's never been little old you it's always been big you everybody ain't after you for no reason they after you because it's big you and you are about to eavesdrop on a conversation that somebody's about to have about you because they're gonna tell you that oh oh my gosh pastor Landeri, she about to deliver the nations oh oh my gosh this person they about to bring this out listen because it's big you it's not little you i don't care that hundreds of thousands of people are out there against you if god is for you who can be against you no one
Baby, the confidence of Gideon, he was like, oh, bet. Got it, God. Confirmation. Let me run with this real quick. While God's on my side, let me get my army together real quick. So, boom. Let me tell you how he defeated him because it's so funny. And this is how it go. So, as soon as Gideon, we are in verse 15. As soon as Gideon heard them telling the dream of, the, of his interpretation, interpretation, he began to worship. And he turned to the he returned to the camp of Israel and said, "Arise, for the Lord has give, the Lord has given the host of Midian into our hands." And he divided three hundred men into companies and trumpets into the hands of all of them with empty jars and torches inside the jars. And he said to them, "Look at me and do likewise. When I come to the outskirts of the camp, do as I do. When I blow the trumpet." I and all who are with me then blow the trumpets also on every side of the camp and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. Mm. Listen, when God moves, you move just like that. Gideon says, I heard you, God. He began to worship. He ran back to the camp. He woke everybody up. He says, y'all get up. Grab your trumpets. Grab your jars. Put lights inside your jars. When I move, you move. When I sound the trumpet, you sound it. When I, when I blow a whistle, you do it. When I move, you move. Just like that. When God tells you to go, you go just how God tells you to go. You jump up. You run. You do exactly what God do. You don't add nothing. You don't take it away. When God tells you to move, you move just like that. If God tells you to go to that ground, pick up some dirt and sprinkle it in your hand and say this is my ground this is my house this is my foundation that's what you do when god tells you to go to that car lot and touch the hood of that car and tell you that's yours that's what you do if god tell you to apply for a job you get up that night and you you apply whatever god tells you to do you do because the ground is yours the battle is yours it's all yours you got to do exactly what god tells you to do when he tells you to do it it's a time limit assigned to it and when it's when god tells you it's for you don't second guess it you run like lightning that's why i tell y'all run baby run Run. When God gives you the word, don't you second guess what he told you to do. You do exactly what he tells you to do. Let me get back to the word. 19. Listen, 19. So Gideon and the hundred a man, the hundred men who were with him came to the outskirts of the camp and at the beginning of the middle, watch. And when they had just set um and when they had just set watch, they blew the trumpets and smashed the jars with their hands. Then the three hundred then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the jars, and they held they held it in their left hands the torches, and in their right hands the trumpets to blow, and they cried out, and the sword of the Lord and for Gideon. They and they cried out, A sword for the Lord and a sword for Gideon. Every man stood in their place around the camp, and the army ran. They cried out and fled. And when they blew the 300 trumpets, the Lord set every man sword against his comadre and against the army. And the army fled as far as Bethesda, towards Zerath, and as far as the border of um, Abel. I can't say it. Let that be. <laughs> and the men of Israel were called out to Nepal, and from Asher, and, the, and from Mas Manessa and they pursued um, they pursued after Midian. Then Gideon sent out message, messages throughout the hills of Ephraim mm -hmm. saying, "Come down against the Midianites." And they captured the wa uh, waters against them as far as Beth Barah and also Jordan. So the men of Ephraim called out and they were captured by the waters and also the Jordan. And they captured the princes of Midian and or or Orf and Zeep, Zeep, and they killed Orf at the rock of Orf, and Zeep they killed at the wine press of Zeep. Then they pursued Midian and brought their heads of Orf and Zeep to Gideon across the Jordan. So boom. This this sounds crazy how they defeated them, right? They defeated them with confusion. And this is the funny part. They were all sleeping in their camp, thinking about, you know, whatever they're thinking about in their dreams, not knowing that Gideon had already had them in their trap right so he took the 300 men they had trumpets in their um right hand and they had the torches in their left hand they broke the torches they sound the trumpets the people ran out the people ran out in confusion and killed themselves they were battling against themselves they didn't even have to do no fighting they let them this is what happens when god comes in the enemies are going to defeat themselves you ain't gonna have to do nothing you will be silent 
and let God do his perfect work. That's why you let God do whatever he do best because your enemies are going to defeat themselves. You ain't got to do nothing. All they did was bust some glass and sound some trumpets and then they took off running and killing themselves. And then they pursued them. And, you know, they, they ended up killing them and took the prince's head and they cut them off and, you know, they won that battle. But when it's time, God will step in on your behalf. You don't have to fight battles. All you got to do is be obedient to what God told you to be. You going back and forth being a uh, keyboard junkie right back with them, trying to defend yourself. And God says, what for? What for? I got this. I can do more than you can do. Yeah, you can go word for word. You can go fist for fist. You can go toe to toe with your enemy. But I can confuse them and make them do this to themselves. I can make a fool look like a fool in their own eyes. Why then are you finna go fight a battle that's already won? Don't you know if you be still that I can do it? Don't you know if you be obedient that I can deliver you? You don't even know who you are. You don't even know the power that you carry. You don't even know who you are. But I'm about to show you who you are. Listen, they were supposed to be defeated. They were supposed to not even be defeated. They were supposed to be wiped off. It wasn't even supposed to be no more Israelites. But if God is for you, no one can be against you. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what you're up against. If God is for you, no one can be against you. The battle is already won. The battle is already won. Listen, ain't no need for all of that. Ain't no need for all of that. Mm -mm. And I'm going to come back to, um, hold on. Because here we are. God took back what they thought they stole. In them defeating the Midianites. Because the Midianites thought they were all of that. And they were big bad bullies. And God knew that. God knew they were big bad bullies. But he knew what his children needed to understand who he was. Because they had got beside themselves. You know when you get teenagers and they get beside themselves because they think they 6'2". And they think they can talk to mom and daddy like they lost their mind. And you got to break your kids down. There was a breaking that had to break that had to happen. But after a breaking comes a breakthrough. And now after the seven years of them breaking and figuring out like they had to cry out, Lord, Lord. And because they cried out, you know, God had sent the prophet to tell them why he did exactly what he did. Because they were acting like they were innocent. You know when you were a child, they think they don't know what they did, but they really know what they did. They knew they had made false gods. They knew they turned their back against God. They knew they were smelling themselves a little bit too much. But even though they were chosen people, just as God delivered them out of um, Israel, out of Egypt with Moses they were still his chosen people even though they had to endure the 400 years of slavery because they still were hard-headed and disrespectful as that and you know they just bad children and we are god's children at the end of the day we are still god's children all of us even though we grown we could be 67 years old we still are god's children and he knows what to do for each of our children for each of his children they were hard-headed they made false gods they were worshiping false gods they got mad with gideon for tearing down their false gods they even came to kill him for trying to take down for not even taking down for taking down the false gods and returning god back to his rightful stone for putting a, a, a temple there for god they got mad because he knew who god was and a lot of people are mad because you know who God is. I don't care that they say they can't see your God. They're making all these false gods and they're saying this, this, and this. And they say, where is your God? And you're like, don't worry about it. In due season, you're going to see who my God is. Not only are you going to see who my God is, you're going to feel who my God is. Gideon knew who God was when he approached him in the, and when he sent his angel to approach him in the wine press. Hiding beneath nothing. Hiding because he knew if he was to come out that his harvest would be getting taken. All of his hard work that he's done would be getting stolen. And the enemy comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. And he knew if he was to come up out of the wine press and try to eat in peace that his food would get stolen. Because you don't have peace when you have enemies. They come in to take away your peace. But God says, I come to give you perfect peace. So all in the bottom, he's down there shuffling his wine, his wheat in a wine praise, terrified for his life, terrified for not only his life, but for his food and his harvest that he worked so many years for. All of his stuff that he worked for, he's afraid to come up and he's afraid to eat in the presence of his enemies. But God said, let me tell you what I'm going to do for you. Not only are you going to come out of the darkness, not only are you going to come from under this wine press, you are going to be able to eat in the presence of your enemies. And not only that, you're going to have the head of your enemies. I'm going to give you the head of your enemies and I'm going to make you come from a nobody in a wine press hiding to a somebody that is going to be ruler over many and taking the heads off of your enemies and letting them know who your God is because God reigns forever. 
I'm going to tell you who your God is. I'm going to show you who your God is. You're coming from a nobody to a somebody. You're coming from being glass to first. And all of those gluttony people, because they didn't need all y'all food. They just did it because they have gluttony on them. They were bullies. They came out to steal, kill, and destroy because they knew who the devil was and they worked for his bald head itself. Listen, they came to take what they wanted to take because that's what they are. But God says, I'm coming to give you life and not only life, life that you may live more abundantly. Come out of the darkness, come out of the hiding so I can address you as the kings and queens that you are. I'm going to address you as a somebody because they're thinking you are nobody. But baby, you don't attack a nobody. You don't rob a nobody. You don't come to steal from a nobody. You come to take from people that are great. You come because you see greatness that are inside of you. Gideon never did anything crazy. All he ever did was destroy the calves that they had made. And all of a sudden, they're having dreams. God will give your enemies dreams of who you really are. And prophecies of who you really are. And they're like, ooh, we about to get defeated by somebody named Gideon. They don't even know who Gideon is. Gideon is a nobody to them, right? But even a nobody is a somebody in the right people's eyes. Hmm. They gave a dream. God gave a dream to them. And they was like, oh, we about to lose this battle. And you know, they probably, because warning come before destruction. They probably gave a warning to their they commanders. And their commanders was probably laughing because they were just childish. Who is this getting y'all speak of? Oh, you talking about Joab's son, the nobody? Oh, you talking about Jesus of Nazareth? You talking about, oh, the carpenter? Joseph's son? Oh, you mean God's son. You know the earthly one. You know the fleshly God, but you don't know the God that reigns above. So they talking about you. Oh, you talk about the prostitute daughter? Oh, you talk about the, the, the heroin addicted child? Oh, you talk about, oh, you talk about the crackhead addicted daughter? Oh, you talk about, you talking about, yeah, yeah, that one right there. That one right there. The one that you counting out. Yeah, that one right there. The one that you think don't got hope. Yeah, that one right there. That one right there is who I'm choosing. That one right there is about to pull that family out of a generational curse. That one right there is about to have generational wealth. That one right there is about to be a nobody turned into a somebody. That one right there. I take the nobodies and I turn them into somebodies because they were always somebody. I knew who they were before I formed them in their mother's womb. I knew who they were. And God says, I know who you are. I don't care what they trying to say you are. I know who you are. Therefore, when I come to you, I'm going to address you as the somebody that I know that you are. Not the nobody that your enemies think you are. And really, your enemies know that you are a somebody. They just don't want to give you the credit that you deserve. But don't worry about it. In due season, they're going to see you shine. In due season, they're going to see your light. In due season... Baby, in due season, because in God's perfect time, life flows. And life is about to flow your way. The direction of God is about to come your way. That nobody is about to be somebody. Because you always been somebody. You are nobody to them, and really you not. Because you, they really fighting you for real, for real. For real, for real, you are somebody. Whole time they knew you are somebody. And in due season, you're about to reap your harvest. And they're not going to be able to take your harvest away from you. They're not going to be able to take anything away because they ain't never built it in the first place. You are about to eat the harvest that you planted. What a man what a man sows, that shall he reap. And you've been planting good seeds in this ground. You've been planting good seeds in this ground. You've been sowing good seeds into that ministry, into that church, into that in that family, into them friends. You've been sowing good seeds. And because you've been sowing on fruitful grounds, God says, whole time, I've been blessing you. And I've been doing little things you just didn't even know. I've been making a way for you you just didn't even know. But I'm about to show you how many harvests they took. They still were able to plant good seeds because they had been the called people. When you plant good seeds in the ground, it's always going to come back. And that's why they kept coming back to steal. Because they couldn't plant their own harvest. Because they didn't have good ground. But because the Israelites has always been chosen people, every year they could continue to plant harvest and the harvest will continue to grow. And it's going to continue to grow because you're on good ground. Because you have good hands. You have a good heart. You have all of that. That's why they're coming to steal because they can't have their own harvest. But what is for you is for you. And it don't matter what they tried to steal. When God said it's your season, it's your season. They can steal your name. They can steal your content. They can steal all they can steal. But when it's your time, it's your time. And can no man take away from you what God has done for you. In closing, God says, come out of hiding. Mighty man of valor. Mighty woman of valor. Come out of hiding. Because this is your season. 
and you have planted a good harvest and no longer will they, they come and eat it away like the locust and the canker worm. God says, I'm coming to give you recompense. No longer will you hide in the shadows of your enemies. No longer will you hide. You're going to come out of hiding and you're not only just going to come out of hiding, you're bringing your people out of hiding with you. You're coming out being a generational curse breaker. You're coming out with generational worth, wealth. You're coming out knowing who you are and you're coming out eating in the very presence of your enemies that thought they were going to oppress you. Come out of hiding. Come out of hiding. I told you the title of that God said for me was hiding in the dark. You're not hiding in the dark anymore. God says that he's, hot, he's shedding light in the dark places. I love you guys. I pray that this nourish your soul. I pray that y'all understood the hood version. Sorry I had to get there to make it make sense for some. And you know, it is what it is. Um, I love you guys. And I pray that I fed you guys the soul. And I pray that you understand who you are and who God called you to be. And whose you are. And when God blesses you with what you asked for, with what you prayed for, with what you desired. Do not forget God. Do not forget God in everything you do because the harvest is right here. The harvest is about to be plucked up, but I need you not to go back like the Israelites did and make false gods and act like God never exist, existed in your life and act like you don't know who God is because the same God that delivered you is the same God that's going to deliver you time and time again. But do not forget God when you get what you pray for. He's saying me now, say it again. Do not forget him when he gives you what you're asking for. Do not forget him when you get what you want. God says he's delivering you and your harvest is here. Do not forget him. He loves you. He's with you. And you're not a nobody. You've always been a somebody. You're not a nobody. You've always been a somebody. God says he's taking what's last and he's making it first. Your light will begin to shine everywhere. Do not forget him. Let me stress before I get off because I'm about to get off. Do not forget God. I love you guys. I leave with you my peace. I leave with you my joy. I leave with you wealth, knowledge, and wisdom. God is for you. The battle is yours. Your enemies will turn against themselves. All you have to do is be still. Do not fight back with your enemies. Let a fool be a fool in the presence of fools. While you radiate and you radiate God's glory. God is for you. The battle is won. The battle is won. Don't you cry no more tears. Don't you cry no more tears. And don't you go word for word with the enemy no more. The battle is won. It is written. It is so. And you go in the strength that you have. Because God has a battle that is won for you. I love you guys. Enjoy your day. I'm going to post this on YouTube later. So, go in peace. <laughs>